from a sacred space in a city called Pasadena Presbyterian Church, this is an invitation to worship for you. Join us at the same time each week, and when you can, join us in person any Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Pasadena Presbyterian Church is located at the corner of Colorado Boulevard and Madison Avenue in the Playhouse District in Pasadena, California. And now, in the words of the psalmist, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. As we join, the service is already in progress. people of God shall rejoice and be glad in it. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I welcome you to worship this morning here at Pasadena Presbyterian Church. I invite you to rise as you are able and rise in your hearts as we call one another to worship. We celebrate the good tidings of joy, words of peace, and message of salvation given to us this Christmas season. Break forth in singing, for God has comforted God's people, brought bloom to the wasteland, and shown strength in all the nations. among us. Let us rejoice and be glad.
welcome to Pasadena Presbyterian Church. We're glad you chose to worship with us on this first Sunday after Christmas. We want to especially welcome those visiting us for the first time, as well as those in our viewing congregation watching via live broadcast or delayed video. This is a place of sacred space, a place of belonging, a place where we embrace diversity, build unity in our fellowship, and follow Jesus Christ to serve and transform the world around us. We invite those visiting with us today to stop by the Welcome Center on the patio following worship so we can provide you with information about this congregation and invite you to talk with some friendly folk and to give you a mug in appreciation for being with us today. We have a guest preacher with us today, Dr. Charlene Jin Lee earned her PhD at Union Theological Seminary, has been on the faculty of San Francisco Theological Seminary, and has taught at other institutions. She is currently exploring a call to pastoral ministry through a program at Princeton Seminary. Welcome. Both Pastor Anne and Pastor Steve are on vacation today. We encourage you to look through the bulletin for activities and upcoming activities that may be of interest to you. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for confession. Our God, who judges earth with righteousness, invites us to examine ourselves once more and confess all that is broken in our lives. Let us come before God with our confession. Please join with me in the prayer of confession found in your bulletin and projected on the wall. Gracious God, who brought those wise ones from afar to worship you, we come before you to ask forgiveness. We have sought you in high and holy places, and yet we are ill-prepared to acknowledge your presence among the lowly and poor. We believe you are profound but we overlook your obvious truths. We are fearful and anxious about the unknown, but we hardly consider the realities immediately in front of us. Guide us, incarnate God, by the simple wonders of your love to a rebirth of our faith. May we know more fully your hope and joy and share these gifts of yours with those who are still searching. Let us continue our prayer in silence. Children of God, 
it is clear that Jesus Christ came to help sinners. He is our Savior in all our distress, and it is his presence that saves us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please stand. also with you. Let us greet one another with the peace of Christ. Peace to you. Please join with me in the prayer for illumination. God of the prophets, by the power of the Holy Spirit, speak your word to us and seal it within us that we may heed your call. Amen. The Old Testament lesson for today comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 63, verses 7 through 9. Hear the word Hear God's word for us. I will recount the gracious deeds of the Lord, the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, because of all that the Lord has done for us and the great favor to the house of Israel that God has shown them according to God's mercy, according to the abundance of God's steadfast love. For God said, surely they are my people, children who will not deal falsely, And God became their savior in all their distress. It was no messenger or angel, but God's presence that saved them. In God's love and in God's pity, God redeemed them. God lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. This is the word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. The Gospel lesson this morning comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter, verses 13 through 24. Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet of Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel for those who are seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. God is as the wind which touches everything, everyone. So our presence is always before God who is with us in all time and in all place. The Lord is with you. It is especially meaningful for me to worship with you here at Pasadena Presbyterian Church. I share a mutual affection for your beloved Jack Rogers, who had just retired when I began my work on the faculty at San Francisco Theological Seminary. It was Jack, the ever-reformed theology nerd, who affirmed me those many years ago, Charlene, you are like Calvin, not ordained by the church, but ordained by God. With both humility and this curious association with a 16th century Frenchman, I have taught in seminary classrooms here in your former education building where SFTS Southern California was housed. And more recently, I have been teaching in undergraduate religion and theology classrooms at Loyola Marymount University. I am now in a season of discerning a transition to parish ministry And so it is indeed a fond return to this particular place where I remember the good colleagues and students with whom I shared my very first years of teaching ministry. So thank you for your warm welcome this morning. It is indeed the final Sunday of the year when we may be inclined to recall, recount, remember and reflect on the days now behind us. Yet in the church, we are duly reminded that it is not a final Sunday. It is a first Sunday. If you noticed on your bulletins, it is the first Sunday of Christmas. 
The first Anno Domini, creation now having leaped over from before Christ to a new reality of the Lord with us. The central mark, Christ's birth, making the central mark wedged in that span of eternity, marks also for the believer a turn, a turn in our journey from believing that we are walking alone to knowing the kindness of God who communes with us, to knowing the help of God who is mighty to save. Yet on the first Sunday of Christmas, this 219th year A.D., we awaken to the reality of death, death by guns, death by disease, death by accidents, death by terror. And we are accustomed to reading reports of unsuspecting lives taken by terrorizing violence near and far from Pasadena. Multitudes around the globe suffer in the shadow of ongoing wars and even more languish under poverty's oppression. If not striving for physical survival, we are perishing by the perils of anxiety, of aggression, apathy, and addictions that seem to mark our collective lives in this era of accelerations. We also awaken this first Sunday after Christmas to the reality of pain stuck in our own memories, pain stuck in our own bones, we awaken again to the unspoken bro bruise of long estranged relationships in our families. We awaken to the known predictable pain of upcoming chemotherapy appointments, the ever enduring pain of missing a loved one. Our lives are not wrapped in Christmas glistening lights. Our world, a stranger to the glow emanating from the manger set in the nativity scene. And today's lectionary lessons themselves guide us to this reality, a text that troubles our tidy Christmas wonder with the reality of violence and chaos, suffering and plight of that first Anno Domino that first year of the Lord. That night that Jesus was born in Bethlehem and the days that followed were neither silent nor calm. We see in Matthew's gospel that the world continued turning on its axis of anxiety, aggression, apathy, and one king's addiction to power. King Herod orders all male, male babies to be killed in Bethlehem and all its surrounding region. In this king's feeble and cruel calculation, this would be the only sure way to secure his position from the threat of a divinely appointed king. On that night in Bethlehem, Jesus came as the Son of Man and of woman in human body into human circumstances and participated in the human plight. And as revealed in today's Gospel according to Matthew, Jesus joins the universal plight of migration. From the day he was born, Jesus was literally running for his life. Joseph and Mary, guided by angels, uprooted and moved their young family quickly. They escaped genocide and hid in Egypt. 
then the attempt to return to Israel only to be rerouted again away from danger there. They would later find refuge in Galilee and settle in the town of Nazareth. The zigzagged journey made for chaotic and uncertain days for the Holy Family. There were likely very few nights when Mary and Joseph rested in heavenly peace even as they carried the Savior of the world. The holy night of the Savior's birth was not holy in the way we commonly imagine holy, as transcendent, perfect, pure, and glorious. The Savior was born into a world in strife, tangled up in systems of injustice, terrorizing policies in a world of ordinary people searching for peaceful rest. Just as Rachel's lament was heard in Ramah, weeping for her children, the wailing of grief-stricken fathers and mothers flooded the night skies over Bethlehem when Jesus was born. The night skies over Bethlehem when God came to the world was not singing the choruses of angels. They were filled with a wailing of grief-stricken mothers and fathers. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, crying for help, longing for hope, Desperate for salvation, long lay the world. God's holiness is made radiantly known in such a place, in Ramah, in Bethlehem, and in every place of human suffering and strife today. In fact, God's holy presence awakens our slumber to see more honestly, more truthfully, how deeply in sin and error our lives and our world are wasting away. Yet our unsightliness is the very sight where holy God chooses to be made radiantly known. Creator God turns toward creation. Creator God turns our broken creation and enters in with unrelenting compassion. It was indeed, O holy night, and our imperfect days are indeed holy, because Emmanuel, God with us, has come to make a holy dwelling in our untidy midst. Although Rachel could not find consolation for her bitter grief, though Israel's households mourned deep into the dark night, behold, the light has come. The people living in darkness has seen the great light for all whose lives live are lived in the shadow of death a glorious light has dawned for all those who stumble in darkness behold your light has come and this light of salvation migrated through the harsh terrain of a rejecting world mixing deep in the soil of earthly sorrow and strife The plight of God on earth is depicted in a stunning painting by the local artist, John August Swanson. Some of you may be familiar with his paintings. I invite you to, as a fun homework this afternoon, look up this painting online. The title is Flight into Egypt. It is a panorama of the Holy Family's escape set under a massive midnight sky of glittering stars. It is the urgent plight of a poor family protecting their newborn child from imminent danger. 
while fleeing to an unknown country, fleeing to Egypt. And dotted throughout the complex, distant landscapes are households with a child looking out through a window. The author, the artist, writes this of his work. God is protecting this holy family as they escape to Egypt, but there are so many other holy families that are left unprotected. I envisioned angels rushing to protect Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. We need to be those angels. While we gather to worship our Lord and Savior this first Sunday of Christmas, after Christmas, this last Sunday of 2019, as we recount and reflect, as we look ahead to the new year, we are exhorted to listen, to lean our ears, to hear the muted sounds afar from this beautiful sanctuary. To lean our ears to hear the muted voices of lament rising from Ramah, from Bethlehem, from Somalia, from Houston, from Monsey, New York, from Flint, Michigan, from Adelanto, from the lips of babes and infants who have had to learn sorrows wailing because of our nation's reprehensible border policies. We are called to turn our steps towards these sounds so that they are muted no more. We are called to turn onto Colorado Boulevard and beyond for long lay the world. Our challenge as Christians is not to save the people around us, but to love them. So let us love. Let us love without calculation. Let us love fiercely, sacrificially, and faithfully until that soon coming glorious day when Christ will mend creation and mend our own hearts, when Christ will gather us in the healing warm light with all God's children of every time and place. Until then, we can hope. And when your hope dims, Join me in finding consolation in this offering by the poet Gerhard Frost. If I am asked, what are my grounds for hope? This is my answer. If I have two rooms, one dark, the other light, and I open the door between them, the dark room becomes lighter without the light one becoming darker. Light is Lord over darkness. Truth is Lord over falsehood. Life is Lord over death. Behold, beloved of God, your light has come. Alleluia. Amen. Would you rise with your hearts and rise as you are able as we affirm our faith together in one voice. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In the life of this congregation, we learned this week that Risa Schwab died the day after Christmas. A memorial service is being planned and we will share those details as they become available. Let us keep her son Richard in our prayers as well as those friends listed in your bulletin and those we hold in our hearts. God of steadfast love, we thank you in this joyful Christmas tide for all the blessings we enjoy, the shelter of home and the comfort of family and friends, the company of the faithful with whom we celebrate Christ's coming, and for your love, which shines as a light in the darkness. For these and many other blessings, we offer our thanks and praise. God of mercy, in this holy season, there are people in need of your tender mercies. We pray for those who are ill and for those who are recovering, for those whose sadness is made heavier by memories of Christmas's past or by some present pain. We pray for those who do not have enough, enough food, enough money, enough companionship, enough hope. Because there is not yet peace on earth, we pray for those in harm's way. Protect them from war, violence, and cruel oppression. For these and many other needs, we offer our intercession. God of hope, through long ages, you have given to your people dreams and a vision of the time when there will be no more war, 
no more pain or sorrow, no more death. We pray this day for the time to be fulfilled when we will be reconciled to one another, to all creation, to you. Fill us with hope as we wait upon your coming realm. Give us the will to work for justice and peace and the courage to follow you into every place. We thank you for dreamers and visionaries who respond with imagination and joy to what you are doing in the church and in the world. As the new year draws near, we know that all our times are in your hand. We entrust ourselves and those we love into your care. Let us recite together the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> All creation teems with the abundance of God's provision. Mountains and hills, fruit trees, creeping things, and flying birds. Our own lives bear witness to the abundance of God's love and mercy. For God has lifted us up and carried us in our need. In joyful praise, we offer to God a portion of all we have received. The ushers will come forward to receive the offering.
Christian, O God, we are grateful for the gift of your dear Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Receive, we pray, these offerings we bring. May they be used in the service of your grace and truth dwelling among us. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Beloved of God, the light has come. As we have been blessed by the warm light of Christ here in this place, may we go and dot this city and dot this world with the light and the hope of Jesus Christ. And now may God's love that is from everlasting to everlasting, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the close communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and your household now and forever. Amen.
You've been watching the service of worship from the Pasadena Presbyterian Church. The church has been broadcasting its worship service as a mission outreach in Southern California for over 75 years. We'd enjoy hearing from you with any comments you may have regarding this broadcast. Send us a letter to Pasadena Presbyterian Church, 585 East Colorado Boulevard, Pasadena, California. The zip code is 91101. And be with us again next week at this time for the Sunday morning worship service from the Pasadena Presbyterian Church.